so let's let's start. Uh, can you can you please uh, uh, tell something about more about your uh, your organization, where you're from, and you know how do you like impact? Yes, uh, I'm so delighted to be here, and I'm coming from Estonia. From the yes, we have minus three at night today, so I'm super happy to be here. And if you can uh, read from my surname, my, my roots are from Poland. But I'm the first time in Poznan and I really enjoy impact and it's very impactful as the visual and uh, as uh, the speeches what I already have been experienced here. So absolutely delightful to be on this panel and looking forward to our discussion. So and, and uh, what, I'm, what, yes. what, what, what is your Sorry. organization doing? I'm so excited. Um, yes, uh, I'm leading a fund. We are investing in a very early stage tech companies. And now we are building a VC fund to even boost the impactful tech ideas to grow into scaled companies. Great. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sandra. I'm from Baltic Sandbox Ventures. We are a venture fund that invests in deep tech and life science, not the things that everyone considers to be deep tech and life science, but in those like crazy scientists, you know, who are sitting in their labs and thinking about some ideas how to send someone to space, this is what we, we basically do. Uh, we do it normally in Baltics, but we also look at the Eastern European region. Uh, before the fund, we've been uh, an accelerator in the region for five years, and we were running different communities, including the women in tech community, women invest in tech community, so we are pretty experienced in terms of community building. Great. Marketa? Yeah, it's a great to be here, so thank you very much for the invitation and also to uh, fellow speakers. I'm looking forward to our discussion. And I'm here actually on behalf of three organizations. So okay. the first, first is Czech Invest, <laughs> which is the governmental agency of the Czech Republic supporting startups and innovative companies. Uh, for a long time, but last year we have launched the biggest program for startups and spin-offs uh, in the Czech Republic. Also, I'm here on behalf of Europe uh, uh, Nation Alliance, which is a newly established European uh, platform and agency who aims to uh, help member states to achieve the European Startup Nation standards to improving the startup ecosystem. So this is like a first step to uh, harmonize the uh, startup uh, scene and the ecosystem within the Europe. And also, I'm a founder of the Czech Startups, which is the community partner of uh, Impact CEE. Great. So, uh, so I have this. Uh, I have this idea that we're gonna talk about ecosystems, and uh, and I wanted to to ask you. You know, I'm from Poland, Estonia, uh, Lithuania. Lithuania, and and, tra and tra Czech Republic. It's a start of a good joke, right? We we can we can say it's a, it's a start of a good joke. Or on the other side, it's a it's a start of a very good conversation regarding our ecosystems. So. What do you see in other ecosystem that you know that you that you would like to have your in your own ecosystem, or or are, would you like to you know do a copy paste of it, or you know let's uh, let's not do a typical you know presentation of, of our you know of our countries, but let's you know let's let's see, let let's see what what is what is great in 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 another country. Marketa, would, would you like to would you like to um, start? Yeah, it's, a, it's a really good question and, uh, you know, to be honest, I'm sitting here next to the ladies from Estonia and Lithuania and they are like uh, leading in supporting startups and e-governments and the startup visas and everything uh, related to, uh, to startups. So uh, definitely there is a lot of things we can learn and share across uh, the Europe. Uh, you know, when, uh, when we actually look at ESNA, um, where is uh, the best place to start a business? It's uh, Estonia and then uh, followed by the Lithuania because there is a, a small amount of the money to, uh, to start uh, the business. Uh, European countries, they like a decade ago agreed that it's uh, gonna cost less than 100 euro to, to open the company, but only seven countries uh, in the European Union, they actually achieved uh, achieve this and uh, one of them is, uh, is Lithuania. So uh, this uh, proactive approach and uh, 
the business first uh, approach, I would say. It's something what, uh, what we can learn, uh, at least in, uh, in the Czech Republic. I know whether it is because the countries are uh, smaller, so it's easier to, uh, to agree on some certain things, or it's a mentality, or it's uh, you know, some need for, uh, for the innovation, and have a strong leader who just decide, okay, this is the way we, uh, we have to go and uh, do everything for it. So, uh, so this, that would be definitely it uh, from, from, from the start. Um, I don't know if there is uh, anything when we can uh, look actually at the, uh, at the Poland. I think that, uh, that you uh, have a new leg legislation about uh, the simple joint uh, stock company, right? Which is uh, quite new and also some uh, reductions of the taxes from the venture capital, which yes. is also yes. something we yes. are discussing. In the Czech Republic, it's, but it's now far away from the implementation. It's just uh, the idea and a discussion. So now I think the Esto Estonian, uh, the Estonian uh, voice should be, you know, as at vot at bottom. Okay, <laughs> to thank this. you. It was so so much of adver advertisement for our country, but yes, definitely, I would say that uh, when we started, um, when I also entered the startup uh, world. We were very much looking for Lithuania, what uh, they were doing. And uh, we, of course, we always look for Poland because Poland, f as we see it, is very much of how government supports with infrastructure and all these uh, amazing buildings and what you have as a big country. So the uh, funds which are also backed by the government, we just come in, come in slowly to this. But what we really learned from uh, Lithuania, because you are also a small country, is about the ecosystem. And it was very, very well seen from, uh, for, our, for us, from Lithuania, how they have built up their fintech vertical. It was universities and government and private sector and in, uh, international uh, companies who came and created and boosted the ecosystem. And this is where it's like Atlantis, where the other fintechs could rise. So it was for us like a really, really big uh, example. Thank you. Uh, well, I should say that the best ecosystem is Lithuania, otherwise they won't let me back in the country, you know. <laughs> but like, to be honest, uh, that's uh, the two, th two ecosystems that impressed me lately were Estonia, like, I mean, as usual, we are rivals, but like, we are also friends and we are always looking at each other. And basically, to, the best way to get something out of our governments is to come to the government and tell them, you know, Estonians did it. And they're like, okay, Estonians did it, we should do it as well. So uh, definitely Estonia, first of all, in terms of legislations, because we are venture funds, um, that is also regulated uh, in the whole, let's say, process and the whole legal and the whole things are much easier in Estonia. And this is why a lot of funds are structuring there. Uh, secondly, in terms of uh, Estonia is unique because of 12 unicorns, you have now how many? Yeah, uh, so with the 12 unicorns, uh, and, and those guys, they're giving back to the ecosystem, they're reinvesting in the ecosystem, they operate as angel investors, they operate as funds, and this is really cool, uh, especially when the country is so small and like everyone knows everyone. And the second one uh, that impressed me like over the last year and a half from the start of the war is Ukraine. So how the ecosystem could uh, get together, because before the war, uh, we had a small office in Ukraine and we were like trying to work with the Ukrainian ecosystem, but it was really fragmented, also depending on the cities. But how the whole country united, how the startup community, investors community united and started working for their victory and started supporting each other, that's amazing. I'm really looking forward to see how this ecosystem is going to develop. Okay, so now, so my turn, you know, the, the Polish point of view. So I admire that you guys uh, or your startups scale from the, from the day one because of the, the size of, of, your, of your country and it's not, and it's, 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 it's not something disrespectful, it's, it's just geography. You, you know, you, you, your startups, they, they, from day one, they, they want to scale to, uh, you know, to the whole world. While in Poland we we have such a you know such a big country and and big uh, big market and and the people are just you know you have a market of 40 million yeah uh, we have less than three million people in the country so when our startup said we are going to go to Lithuanian market all the investors say like there is no Lithuanian market the Baltic market we are seven less than seven million yeah and Estonia is only 1.3 million so 
<laughs> yeah, so, so, so that, is, uh, that is one thing. And the other thing uh, recently that was uh, actually introduced in law in Lithuania is the ESOP, that you actually, you know, uh, did, did everything from from the scratch from and and it's a new new law that that is in, in Lithuania regarding the the ease of that is that is actually that is actually something uh, something great. So uh, so the next question uh, is regarding you know what is the um, what are, what are the priorities regarding the either the the what the your ecosystem needs or what are the needs of your startups regarding the, the public policy. As, as you can see, we did a report regarding net neutrality. I, I can see that it, 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 couldn't, it, it could be or could, could not be a, a good point for, for, for your organizations or for your countries. But what is, you know, what is the thing that your, your startups uh, uh, say that uh, they, they need a change or, or what is, you know, what is what is killing them or, or, or you know, harming them or, or slowing them down. So yeah, maybe I can start, you know, um, in, in the Czech Republic, when you usually ask a startup what the state should do, it's please do nothing. <laughs> yeah, this, is, uh, this is the most common answer, but um, obviously there has to be some collaboration uh, between the state and, uh, uh, and the startups. But it's now resonating, uh, it's, and you already mentioned it, it's an ESOP because it's not in our legislation and because right now there is a little shortage of talent uh, in the Czech Republic, especially when 90% uh, of the startup companies, they uh, conduct business in the ICT, both the software or, or IoT or the hardware. It's, it's very difficult to find the employees. So um, the startup organizations such as startup founders or even venture capital funds uh, they now try to uh, get to the right contacts within the government, within the Ministry of uh, Finance uh, to change the law, which is uh, not obviously an, uh, an easy task. And uh, another thing would be yes, the, uh, the talent and the business skills, because uh, in uh, CEE region specifically, there is a big uh, tech talent, a uh, lot of um, uh, engineers and uh, technology people, but uh, business skills and uh, maybe some experience within the scaling up of the company is what is missing. So this is also what we are trying to do to help uh, startups to get the mentor and um, uh, to, uh, to help them scale abroad. So those three topics probably within the Czech Republic. Uh, yeah, so if we would be looking before 20, <coughs> 2020, what was happening at the market uh, in Europe? At uh, the end of the day, it was the competition of the marketing budgets, right? So uh, which one has more money, the more successful the startups are. Uh, then we had so COVID, then we had all the crises drive out there in the market, everything that's happening now. And the venture landscape is changing. Investors start to invest into basically hard assets, hard assets, patents, uh, scientific researchers, and so on. And it's all connected with deep tech, biotech, mad tech, mil tech. Uh, however, we didn't have a very strong, let's say, presence of those in Europe before. And uh, the regulations are just crazy. Like if you're a biotech startup, forget about going to market in the first three years or something like this. So what the governments essentially could do uh, to build the regulatory sandboxes for life science, for biotech, for med tech, uh, to give uh, these startups the access to the anonymized public data, to help them. I mean, uh, if there won't be any impediments for them to thrive, they will thrive, and Europe will change it at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah, I just uh, would like to add because uh, maybe, yes, our small country, we have some advantages, and uh, the biggest advantage is, of course, then when we have a problem, then we just call to prime minister. <laughs> uh, so, but uh, it's just to be very serious. Then yes, I absolutely agree that now in Estonia is the same. I'm very happy because I, my fund, we were basically giving money for robots and no one wanted robots. Everyone, everyone wanted SAA SaaS solutions. And we were sending something to the moon and they said, no, 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 no. Please give me something which is very close to the market. And now uh, biotech and medtech all come to me and say, like, we cannot do anything. We need another one million just, just, to, just to wait until the government will do something. 
and it, it means that bureaucracy now is really uh, stopping or like uh, st stuck in the, the old innovation, even in, in construction. Because if you think construction is one of the biggest sectors, and even they, they, they want to rebuild, they want to, to make a new infrastructure, and they cannot just because of the bureaucratic uh, procedures. So we are waiting when AI will, you know, uh, just uh, substitute some of the people who are maybe not very efficient or the regulations are not very efficient. So thank you. The time is up. I can, I can see that, uh, that the, time, uh, the time is up. Thank you, thank you once, uh, once again for, uh, for joining us today. If you want to talk, uh, talk about or, or get to know more something about, uh, about uh, Czech Republic, Lithuania, or uh, Estonia, or even Poland, you can, uh, you can, uh, you can, you know, we can have a coffee or, or, uh, or meet someone uh, somewhere face to face or, or, or even have a, a get together. Uh, and uh, we all are, uh, or we all are on LinkedIn. So if you, if you want, you probably can uh, can connect with us. So thank you, thank you so much, and uh, have a great day in, in Poznan. You, you know, you can you're gonna you're gonna see a, a very nice uh, very nice town. And thank you for thank you for coming uh, for the impact and for, and and thank you for uh, for your kind words. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you.